Hey guys, it's Britt. Today we're going to be doing Britney's book review number two. The book we'll be doing today is Millionaire Success Habits by Dean Graciosi, The Gateway to Wealth and Prosperity. This book is published by Growth Publishing. It is 240 pages. Come on, it's a very it. new book. It was just released in 2018. That's actually when I read it last year. I actually just saw Dean recently. I brought my whole family and Dave. It was amazing. Seriously, it was so awesome. Here's some Snapchats from the show. <laughs> it was sick. I really love these guys. These guys are my mentors. Dean is a multimillionaire. He's a highly successful real estate investor. My overall impression of the book is I absolutely loved it. I would give it five stars all day. Dean has sold over a billion dollars in inventory. Yeah, it's pretty sick. This is his crib. Yeah, this is who I fuck with. I actually just told Dean about my book review coming up. He said he was excited. He loved the enthusiasm. And yeah, so can't wait to show you, Dean. Yes. Basically, it's amazing what a small shift can do. A few small shifts in your habits and psychology. Like if you're going this way, one path, just a couple degree shifts, and then you just continue on a different path, a year from now, you'll be in totally different places. It's crazy. I agree. These small shifts are the key. If you just wanna take your life to the next level, check this book out. With a few small shifts in your life, you can totally change everything. It's truly amazing. It doesn't have to be some huge big project. Just take a little by little, day by day, and you'll be amazed at how fast you can change. This deals a lot with psychology um, and the importance of having the right psychology in life. It's kind of similar to a lot of the Tony Robbins book. If you've seen my book review of last week, I try to do a book review once a week. So last week I did Tony Robbins, Awaken the Giant Within. You might see some similarities. Tony and Dean are like best friends. They work together. They're huge business partners. They are awesome. <laughs> and basically Dean learned a lot from Tony. Tony is like the god. Tony then inspired all these other people and it's this amazing tree. So if you want to get in on this amazing tree of goodness, jump on. <laughs> Evaluation of strengths and weaknesses. Basically, I felt this whole book was very strong. Honestly, I didn't find any weaknesses. I think that this is your way of telling me something. I am an avid reader and studier, and so I know what he's saying is very true and accurate. <laughs> it's, it works. I've seen it in my own life. I, I study millionaires, billionaires. I'm telling you, these are who I hang out with, okay? So, <laughs> okay. So now I'm just gonna get into the book a little bit some nitty gritty, some notes. So the cool part about this book is he has a lot of fun challenges. Those are always cool to really test yourself. You know, you don't know if you have a skill until you actually do it. Hmm. Reading is great, but then when it's active reading and you actually now put this into play in your new life, you're gonna see the results. Hmm. And sometimes that's why you have to be grateful for these hard situations so you can practice and evolve. It's pretty cool. When you focus on the outcome rather than the obstacle, your life will never be the same. Hmm. So don't focus on the hurdle, focus on the end result. Hmm. Like if I have to clean my room and it's so messy and stressful, I'm like, oh my God, it's overwhelming. I could focus on all of this overwhelming mess or I could focus on how good I'm gonna feel after I get it clean. I'm like, you know what, this is gonna be amazing. I'm gonna be so proud of myself after this. And then you're just gonna take it on through. Hmm. Another thing he likes to talk about in this book is look back at it from the future. So kind of like what I was just saying, pretty much if you have a big goal, like I wanna make my first million in my company. So now you're gonna imagine that you already did those things. So instead of coming at a place from, I don't know how to get there, it's, it's just a hope, it's a dream, I don't know, might not happen. I'm gonna think of it from the places it already happened. And now I'm looking back at it of all the work, all the struggle, struggles, 
everything I've overcome. And that is how you're going to get there. That's how you're going to train your mind to actually bring you there. <laughs> it's crazy, but that's the truth. He also has this exercise called the seven levels deep exercise. This is a really good one for finding your why. Basically, anything you do, if you want to do something major or great, you're going to need to have a strong why to get you there because you're going to have a lot of challenges and hurdles. And if your why is not strong enough, you're probably not going to overcome those. You need to really know why you're doing it and keep that strong in your mind. Why do I want to become a millionaire? So I can positively influence the world and contribute. Okay, the second question, why? You know, and then it just goes kind of on and on to there. And a lot of times towards the end of these, you're going to find some really deep whys. Like maybe it's security, maybe it's control of my own life, really. <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> You'll find some good answers and that'll help really truck you through the hard times. He recommends having a conversation with God, you know, praying. <laughs> Seriously, talk to God about it. I love this one. There's an exercise of a villain and a hero. So basically we both have two wolves inside of us. One's the hero, one's the villain. They are both battling for your life. Only one can win. Which one's gonna win, you may ask? Well, the one you feed, right? Feed the hero. By the way, God wants you to be the hero. The villain, basically, he's the one inside of you that's gonna say, you suck, you're not good enough. You know that little voice where it's like, you know, you, you failed before, this isn't you, you're never gonna make it. Then there's that hero wolf who's saying, no, focus on the positive. They know what you're capable of. They believe in you. You wanna feed that hero. <laughs> So basically just don't give any attention to the villain and it'll just kind of die and fade off. You want to feed the hero, not the villain. <laughs> okay. So Dean also talks about incantations and personal power phrases like Tony. So these are things just to help you get your subconscious and mentally ready. So you can say to yourself, if I can get through this, I can get through anything. Say it three times in a row. If I can get through this, I can get through anything. If I can get through this, I can get through anything. If I can get through this, I can get through anything. Also, things happen for us, not to us. So you don't want to be the victim. Victims don't go anywhere. Trust me, you don't want that victim mentality. If something horrible happens to me, like my car breaks down, as crazy as it sounds, that happened for me, not to me. There's a reasoning behind it. Maybe it's time for a new car, and maybe there's this great deal that is right here, right under my nose, and I never would have got it because I never would have been looking if my car didn't break down. So then I'd have to pay thousands of dollars more. But see, if you're always focusing on the negative, you're never going to open your mind to these possibilities, so then they're not going to happen because you create them. It's a lot to deal with the law of attraction, which I also major in and teach. That is amazing. It doesn't say the law of attraction in here, but that's what it's talking about. So it's really cool when you know all these different concepts and you see it like all throughout, just not called that. <laughs> Obviously he's a big salesman, so he talks about that and how to actually be a good salesman. You want something that works for both of you guys, but people will learn from you, listen to you, love you, buy from you, hire you, they feel understood, not when they understand you. So don't make it about you. It's not all about you. It's about them. You want to understand them, their needs, their wants. It's not just about they need this product because you need to sell it. Stories are also very powerful. So relating with people via stories. We can all relate to that. Sell people what they want, not what they need. As crazy as it sounds, People will buy what they want over what they need. So you might want to wrap it up, like their wants and their needs all in one. It's also about how they feel after the sale. So you want to follow up, you want to make sure they're happy, focus on the positive. It's not just sell and be done, bye. No, you want to make sure they like the product, if they have any questions, or, you know, have a good return policy, things like that. Make sure you follow up. You're not just a scam artist. No. He also talks about haters. Basically, if you're going to be anybody, you want to go anywhere, you're going to have haters. It's a part of life. Also, dealing with them is a part of life. I have haters too. 
What up, guys? <laughs> this is how Dean refers to them in Fuse Then. First, I've come to associate a hateful post with someone as a disillusioned fan who is unconsciously still in need of some hope and motivation. That's how I see it, too. Because that's how it is. <laughs> also, the morning is very key to success. So he talks about a champion mode morning mindset. So you really got to have your mind in the right state. I always like to wake up. I learned a bunch of things from Tim Ferriss as well. Um, so wake up, splash cold water on your face, take a cold shower, get ready for the day. I do 10 push-ups or like 25 burpees or something. That's not working out. It's really just getting back in your body. It's just getting ready for the day. Um, as well as you could meditate, you could journal, could practice gratitude, things like that. You want to have like a good list of five things in the morning. If you don't make them all the time, that's not the end of the world, but you know. He also talks about protecting your peace and how vital this is. I could not agree more. This is very key. Protect your peace and happiness every day and watch your happiness and joy grow. You got to give thanks for the opportunity of life every day. Seriously. It's amazing. It's my biggest thing for protecting my confidence and protecting my peace because so many times we don't realize the opportunity we have to give our greatness to the world every single day. God gave us each greatness inside of us and we can't share that with the world when we are not at peace. You gotta stay on those higher frequencies so you can be your best, do your best, and give your best. Another thing, you're gonna have to let go of specific outcomes. I know that can be hard for some of you guys. I know some people who are crazy planners. That's great, but you know what? Sometimes things don't always go according to plan. Ride the current, go with the flow. It happened for a reason. Even if you don't understand that now, just having faith in the process and seeing the silver lining and knowing that it happened for a reason and for your greater good, you'll be okay. Another thing he talks about is setting gratitude alarms. I really like this. I've actually done this. Um, so it's like three times a day, just little alarms, just reminders, you know? Life gets hard sometimes. Things get stressful. But just these little reminders to bring you back. State change, you know? It's really key. 10 a.m. saying, be optimistic, enthusiastic, and loving. It's just a great way to start your day, you know? That's how you want to be today. 3 p.m. You want to say, you can handle anything. It's midday, like you got this. Things get tough, you can handle it. 7 p.m., you are truly blessed. Be grateful. Another thing you're really gonna wanna do to have a better life, a great life, is take time each day to understand people. Instead of just assuming somebody's negative intent towards you and just thinking it's all about you and that they're just an evil person, really just take time to understand them. Like, you know, you're at the store, somebody's rude. Maybe they're having a bad day. It doesn't necessarily mean it's okay, but like you've never had a bad day. Like maybe their dog just died. God damn it. I'm sorry they weren't as peppy as they usually are. You know, maybe you don't know that, but can you think that and understand that? Maybe it's not some evil plot against you. <laughs> maybe that's crazy. <laughs> so you're gonna wanna feed your daily motivation just like you feed your body. That's just as important. You gotta stay motivated. So you can do that by, I have an app. It's like a little affirmations app. There's so many different ways. A journal, grateful. Um, you could make your own inspirational audio and listen to it. Another thing I love is like these morning motivation YouTubes. I'll listen to those on my way to work and they just get you so pumped up. Or when you're running, doing a power hour with those, they're great. Have your own happy places you can go back to when you mentally need to. So for me, I have like, this little closet <laughs> of mine with my clothes but I have like furry rugs, stuffed animals, super chill like just a lounge. I got my crystals, my beads. I just love it. It's super warm and homey and comfortable in there so I go there. I could meditate, journal, just chill, relax. I've had a rough day. I could listen to my beats, watch YouTube, you know, just have these places, have these things that you do. So it's a hard discipline, but you have to have forced focus. Focus hard on your main thing. I used to multitask all the time, doing everything all over the place. And that's cool. I thought I was good at it. You can get better. But 
really kind of makes you more scatterbrained and less likely to really get things done if you kind of just focus hard on that one main thing and you just take it out you're probably going to be a lot more productive honestly <laughs> he also has another challenge it's called the 90 day challenge so you can do this challenge with your goals such as fitness health confidence finances focus and business you can make all different kind of goals in all of these departments or anything else really and then for 90 days which is about three months you're going to dedicate at least 50% of your time to those goals. That's fair, you can still do other things, but at least 50%. Stop doing busy work. <laughs> Honestly, that can be a waste of time. I know you have to every now and then, but if you need someone to mow your lawn, if you're super busy, you got kids, you don't have much time, if you could pay someone 20 bucks to mow your lawn or things like that. If people, you know, I lived alone for a while in this house for my first place, a house living alone, I'm like, geez, that's a lot kind of a lot to handle especially at first it's not like an apartment where all this stuff gets done so if people want to help you out be your secretary and do you know it's awesome let them all right so contribution or bias basically I agree with him I know that what he's saying is true in this book it's tried and true so again follow it and you'll see the changes keep practicing it's not always as easy as it sounds but just a little tweaks here and there just keep practicing Practice makes perfect. My final assessment. I would highly recommend just reading this book for yourself. Honestly, I got this book for free. If you Google it, Millionaire Success Habits free book, Dean Graciosi, I'm sure you can find it unless it's not still going on, but you can try. And you really just have to pay for shipping, which is like eight, nine bucks. So it's great. It's hardcover, super nice. I love hardcover. I think it only comes in hardcover. Some books only come soft cover and I really don't like that so that's another perk of this book never seen it in soft cover because millionaires you know if not you can always grab a copy of my book notes as you know I take amazing notes I highlight all the key points and all the exercises power questions things like that I got it <laughs> um, my overall impression of this book is it was just truly amazing it was really inspirational Really great tools to get you going on having a better life. Any recommendations? I would really recommend this book for anyone at any level, really, in their life. Um, even if you've read a lot of habit books and psychology books, it's just a quick, easy read and reminders, which you really need. Repetition is how we learn. Also, I know a lot of people don't really like to read, so that's why I do these book reviews to help you guys out, as well as my notes. I offer that. But for beginners, honestly, you can handle this book. It's short. It's a really quick, easy read. So for beginners, I really recommend this. <laughs> also, you should follow my Facebook because I do book reviews on there. I used to start typing these up, and then I would just like put a picture of me in the book and then a description about it. But now I have moved on to another level, but I still do that as well. And it's nice because you get different information. And yeah, <laughs> it's fun. So I'm Brittany Lynn on Facebook, if you're interested. One more thing he also talks about is how confidence is really key. This part I really loved because me, I'm so interested in like self-growth. So I'm always learning, studying, grinding. I'm always looking for what I can improve on. But you have to watch because sometimes in doing these things, you're like, okay, I have to improve on this, 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 blah, 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 blah. And you just make all these things you have to improve on. You might start to forget how awesome you are. That feels really and powerful. And you think like you have to improve on everything just because you want to be like the best person ever, that 1%. So you just got to keep it in balance and remind yourself that you are awesome and great. Remember to be proud of yourself and proud of your accomplishments. Track your progress. That's a really great way too is see how you've grown. You know, every year I do like the New Year's resolutions, hmm. things like that. I do monthly goals, hmm. seasonal goals instead of just New Year's, not just once a year. I do three months, hmm. five year plan. Hmm. And then you track your progress and you say, wow, look at how far I've come in this slum. Hmm. You know, look at what I'm doing now. And that really gives you motivation to keep going rather than it's your still thinking, oh man, I still gotta work on this, 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 and you never celebrate those victories, you might get 
caught in a funk and that will hold yourself down. That's also why journaling is so great too. I love journaling, so. That's about all I got for you guys. I really recommend this book. Hope you guys like it. If you like this video, be sure to comment, share, subscribe, like, and don't forget to hit that bell notification so you get notified on my future book reviews. All right, love you guys.